Hello, thank you so much for joining in with my tutorial today. So we're going to learn how to revamp and customize your t-shirts so you can have your own unique creations. It's wonderful for presents for friends or if any of you do an art at school, you could put it in with your coursework as well. So the first thing that we're gonna do, super, super simple, we're gonna show you how to make a cold shoulder top. So we have just long sleeve top. <clears throat> Depends on how, how much you want to expose the shoulder, but we're just going to do a small one today. So we're going to go either side of the arm opening here. And literally, all I'm going to do, if you want to, you can take a wee piece of chalk and you can mark in. But I'm literally going to cut just a semi-circle in one side. And we'll cut the whole way around. It literally is as simple as that. Now, <clears throat> instead, you could take this, go over this side, but just to make sure that we're exactly right, we're gonna fold <clears throat> this in half so that we're all lined up here. And then you know you've done exactly the same on the other side. So we've lined up the armholes and you can pin it in place if you want to. And then we're gonna do exactly the same thing and cut out the other side. And we can see where we've cut here previously. So we're just gonna do the same thing. <clears throat> cut the whole way around. And it's great cotton fabric does not fray. So what you can actually do is just leave it. Here's our cold shoulder top. Super, super simple. I'll put that down, you can see. And because it doesn't fray, you don't need to worry about hemming that in. What we can do is just take our t-shirt and give it a wee stretch, and then it'll just fold in on itself cotton kind of just rolls down in and you can just leave that as it is if there's any wee bits that you need to tidy up just take your scissors and we can trim those off super super simple now just to bump this up even more I can see a wee bit here where it's just hacked so we'll just finish off those edges we want to make this really 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 cool so we're gonna slash the whole way through the back of this t-shirt now. To do that, we wanna fold it in half, but obviously not like this. So you're gonna cut the whole way through the front as well. So we're gonna take the back and just the two side seams, put them together. So we have our top like this. And we're gonna lay that down flat on the table. And now it depends how much you want these slashes to come through. If you only want a tiny wee bit, we're just gonna cut a small amount. And remember, the amount that you cut on this side is the same on the other side. So if, if it's three centimeters long here, the whole seam is gonna be six centimeters open. So I wanna, I wanna go quite deep into this. So we have it in half, and we're gonna literally just take our scissors and just cut uh, about the width of your finger. Again, you can go smaller, you can go uh, deeper if you want to. We're just cutting that the whole way down the back. Um, if you want to, you could uh, do it into the shape of a heart. So you just draw in your heart shape first with a piece of chalk and just cut to the edges. So we'll just do a little bit here. Uh, if you want to, you can go the whole way down the back. But when we open this up, we're left with these lovely, lovely bits. Now, if you then just take and stretch, I'm only gonna stretch a couple and you can see the difference then. Now, see how that goes into like wee rolls? Whenever you stretch that fabric, not all cotton will do this. If you want to know if it'll work, Hold your t-shirt and stretch it out well. And if there's lines, if there's a rib defect, that won't roll round on each other. It will just stay open. But even if it just stays open like that, that's still, that's still pretty cool. So within a few minutes, you have completely revamped this top. Now, you can go mad if you want to. 
You can do the same thing the whole way down the sleeve and just cut in a few wee bits here and there. And then that gives you that nice lattice look as you go down the sleeve. And again, open it up, give it a wee pull, and that rolls around. And it gives just such a lovely look to a very plain top. You can see if I put my arm through this, how it will sit. Okay, so now we're gonna learn how to fringe a t-shirt. We, um, you can make this as long or as short as you like. First thing you do is you'll cut off the hem along the very bottom of the t-shirt. This is where you decide how short you want your t-shirt to be. You can make it into a wee crop top, just cut it a wee bit shorter, or else you can do your fringe longer. Um, so I have already done the first wee bit, and it is again really, really easy. All we do is just cut again about the width of your finger. Just cut through the t-shirt, up in little slices like so. And again, don't stress, they don't have to all come to exactly the same level. You might want some up a wee bit further than others. Whenever you have this cut, then all we do is grab hold and put. Now this is where you'll find if you have a little bit left of the hem, it'll give a chunky look at the bottom. So you can just, just chop it off. If you cut these too wide, they won't go into these wee rolls. If you cut them too um, narrow, you'll find that they could break really, really easily. So I find generally about a finger width. Just give those a good wee pull. Again, it's nearly more natural. After a couple of washes, they all just come into their own anyway. So, and there we have, how easy is that? Our fringed top. And again, this was a t-shirt and I wanted to make it more into a vest top. So all I did was just cut the sleeves out. Again, so easy. Um, and we're gonna learn how to do this design now. Again, very, very, very simple to do. All we need to do is take a top, it, it needs to be a light top when you're working with this kind of a watercolour. It will not work if you try to do it on dark fabric. So we have just our white t-shirt. It's fantastic to revamp old t-shirts that have been about for a while. And I've literally just drawn on this with a Sharpie. And then we'll take our paint. Now, you need to use fabric paint. You can use acrylic and water it down but you'll find it'll be very, very hard when it dries out. And also it washes out very, very, very quickly. So even with my fabric paint, I have watered it down. And you can see it's just the consistency of very, very, very thin milk. And underneath here, I have a piece of parchment paper. You could use a plastic bag if you didn't have parchment paper. And all that's gonna do is stop the color running from the front into the back. We want to keep it all here. Now again, to create this watercolor look, we need to damp down the t-shirt. So I'm just gonna splodge on the water and I'm splodging it on with a big thick paintbrush instead of spraying it on with a spray bottle because I want it all to come out slightly differently and slightly random. I don't want it uniform at all. So pop that on and then we'll just here and there pop a wee bit of the uh, watered down fabric paint. It's good to use a couple of different colours, two or three. You can blend in more colours if you want. And again, we're just splodging this here and there where the blue will come in contact with the red. You'll find that it'll start to take on a purplish color. So it's good to overlap here and there. And don't worry if there's wee skates go over the place as well. That all just adds to it. This is your creation. Be creative with it. Now, if you find that there's any bits that look too, um, too thick, just take your brush and water those down again. 
just in those wee areas. Now, to create this lovely, this wee sort of mottled look here and there, all we're gonna use is rock salt for that. So put a little bit in your hand and just sprinkle it here and there over the top. Just a wee bit here and there. And what that does is it absorbs all the color that's in that area up into the salt and concentrates it. And that's where you find that these wee dots will come from. Now, you cannot uh, be impatient with this. You have to let this dry. So it needs to be in a place where you're not gonna be moving it about because you don't want the salt to go all over the place and just wait for the whole thing to dry. When it's dry, you can just brush off the salt and that's your t-shirt done. So we'll set that one over to the side. And again, you can use just ordinary Sharpies. Sometimes permanent markers will bleed a wee bit. Again, that might be what you want. You, you could do a design with that. You don't have to do words. You could do a heart. You could um, do an inspirational verse, a few, wee, a few wee words, whatever. Now, we're going to look how to do a chenille effect. So, with this one, I'll just pop these paints out in case we spill. So this is the effect that we want to achieve. I've done this one with a heart. Again, you can just do a rectangle as we've done here, whatever shape you want. You can do it tiny, you can do it the whole way, whatever. Um, but to achieve this look, the first thing that we do is you can turn your t-shirt inside out and you put down your fabric the wrong side up so that the right side of the fabric is against the back of your t-shirt okay so we can see that's the wrong side and that is the right side pin it in place and then this this takes a little bit of time the bigger your your pattern here the longer it's going to take you if you have a sewing machine and um, it's obviously an awful lot quicker but you can still do this just with hand needle and thread so you have your, your um, fabric in the back and then sew around the edges. So with the heart, I have sewn my heart shape in. Don't worry about cutting your pattern at the back um, underneath. You can, take, you can take all those excess bits off later on, even if you wanna just put a big square of fabric in around the back. And mark again with a piece of chalk, whatever pattern that you want. So sew around the outside of the pattern first, okay? So we've done a heart here, again here, we've just done a wee rectangle. And then we're gonna sew the whole way along from side to side. And I like things a wee bit random, so I like going over the edges here and there. You can do some a little bit wider, some a little bit more narrow. It doesn't have to be all the same. And then all we do is we cut from one side of it to the other. Now you have to be very, very careful here. You don't want to cut the whole way through this underneath fabric. So um, it takes, a, it's a wee bit fiddly, takes a wee bit of time. Try and lift up the top layer and the back layer away from each other so that you can only feel one bit. And then cut a little neck into the fabric. And then we're just gonna cut and give your scissors a wiggle every now and again, just to make sure that you're only cutting the top layer. You can add two or three layers in here too. If you, if you add a wee bit of voil or a couple of different patterns, a couple of different colors. Again, you can cut through two or three layers together and it gives a wonderful look at the end. But it is so, so simple. Again, this comes out better after it's washed a couple of times, but you can see the way the other pattern is starting to come through. And again, just do the whole thing and you have then that uh, shape. Um, you might want to do, I have one done here, just with circles. And again, just down one side of the top instead of two. So I have put um, my layer of fabric tucked in around the back and then just I, I was so first 
So sew the whole way around and then cut out your fabric. And you can have lots and lots of different colors. Um, another way to just add a little bit of effect to your top is to sew on a wee bit of fabric onto the back of it. And again, it doesn't have to be with a sewing machine. You can just do this by hand. So that was uh, an old t-shirt that I had. You don't have to go and buy expensive fabric. Look through your wardrobe. Look at clothes that you haven't worn for a while or maybe that you just don't like anymore. So instead of throwing them out, you can cut them up and add them to other tops. Again, this was a pair of jeans and I love the way denim just frays around the edges. So that changes a, a completely simple, plain top into a more unique designer looking one. So we'll set that one to the side. Um, the other thing that you can do uh, where we had our top, this top with the fabric dye. If you want to, instead of doing it on the top, you can do it on a piece of fabric separately. This was an old shirt that I had, so it was just a piece of cotton. And I took a wee, a wee bit of time and drew in some nice wee shapes. You can add a wee verse or, or just some inspirational words, just one word, you can do your name, whatever it is. Um, and again, then after this is all dry, you can put it onto your top and sew around the edges. You can either put it onto the top or you can slip it in underneath the way we have done with this one. So you can put your design underneath and just cut out that whole thing. That's another wee look for you. Now this one, oh, this one is so easy and it gives you a really, really, really good effect at the end of it all. So this is the effect that we're going to come up with. A plain navy top. And to get this effect, all we have to do is use bleach. Just ordinary household bleach. So, what we'll do is we'll take a top. Now you can hear the crinkling in underneath where I have put the baking paper. You have to remember, if you only want this pattern on the top and you're not going to do the back, the baking paper needs to go to the very, very edges. There's nothing as bad as doing a whole pattern on the top and it's perfect and then you look at the back and there's a wee splodge. Don't worry if that does happen. Do you know what? Life doesn't always go the way that, that you plan it to. Just go with it. Then afterwards you can do another wee design with the bleach on the back. Now, I have put pins in place just to keep this all in, but I'm now gonna remove the pins because if I don't, they're going to come out on top of uh, a pattern in the bleach as well. So we'll take all these pins out. And it, it was very easy. The way that I did this design was I just used a few pebbles off the beach um, in, different, in different shapes and different sizes. Place them all over the top and then we're gonna spray, spray the bleach over that. You would be surprised, not all tops react to bleach. Now, if you have a really gorgeous top that you love, I can assure you, whenever you're cleaning up, the bleach will get onto your top and will ruin it. And if it's a top that is old and you don't want it anymore and you try to do the bleach effect, it may not work, sod's law. But you can try, just put a wee bit of bleach on a cotton bud, go in underneath a hem, and put a tiny wee bit of bleach, just to see if it will work. Some um, fabrics react very, very quickly, and you'll see it just within seconds. Others take a few minutes to react, so just be patient. So, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna place a few of these stones, I've used smaller ones for this. So we're just gonna place it piggledy piggledy all over. This is a really, really good way if your top has um, got a wee bit washed out. It just gives it a, a new look. Or if you have spilt a wee bit of bleach or a wee bit of paint or something on your top, um, again, 
it just means you don't have to throw it out. Okay, so don't think too much about it. Just put them down quite random. You need quite a fine spray for this. This is one that I have got in one of the pound shops. You get them in, in like a wee um, set. But with so much sanitizer being used these days, most of the sanitizer bottles have quite a, a fine spray. So you can get wee small sanitizer bottles. Instead of throwing them out, you can use them for your bleach. And literally, all we're gonna do is just spray over the top. Now, with any spray, whether it's paint or the likes of bleach, because you can do exactly the same effect with fabric paint as we're doing with the bleach, the more concentrated that you want the spray, so the splodger that you want it, you have to go quite close. The lighter and finer the spray, you, you go away from the fabric. So we're gonna go quite far away and we're just gonna spray all over. Now, you really need to do this in a very, very well ventilated area. Um, I would generally try to do all my bleaching outside. It can really overcome you. Um, the other thing is you might want to put on goggles. I know with the spray we're going away, but just to make sure, um, bleach isn't too bad now, nowadays. Um, it, it doesn't burn the skin as much as it used to, but if your skin is sensitive, you could put on a pair of gloves as well. Okay, so we're giving that a good wee spray. See, it's starting to come up. So we'll let that work away for a wee minute. And again, to get this design on the sleeves, so easy. All we're gonna do is take a big paintbrush, just a cheap paintbrush, and a bowl of concentrated bleach. Dip your paintbrush in, and we're just gonna swipe this over, just all higgledy-piggledy, and you'll find where you put more bleach will come out that wee bit more concentrated. So here and there, you can put another wee bit. Oops. You can see where I'm moving the pebbles. And again, a wee bit on the back. And I only want my sleeves done. I don't want the back done with this. So I'm just going to go right up close to the arm edge. And just leave that. Do the same on the other side. Now you can see the way this is coming up now. And you can see already, that's a very, very reactive one. Sometimes it takes a few minutes. If you apply bleach and nothing happens at all after about five or six minutes, chances are it's just not going to react. Again, we're gonna turn this over. You can see where I've, I've done a wee patch test. This bleach is strong, definitely do it in really well ventilated areas. Okay, so we just Brush all over. Now is always the really exciting part. I love to remove these. How cool is that? You can use so many things to get a, a pattern on. You can make your own pattern. If you want a heart shape, just cut a heart out of a piece of, of newspaper and set it down, you might want the shape of a butterfly, of a star, of a circle, whatever. Even take um, the wire rack out of the cooker and you can set the wire rack down and spray over the top of it. Um, anything that will make a pattern at all. Lace is really, really lovely just to set down. Now, you just have to remember, whatever you use will be probably ruined. So don't go using the, the best lace or ribbons and things that you have. Just to show you another couple of tops that we've done. This one <clears throat> was done with, with a fern. Again, just a fern out of the hedge. It's best to um, press it down, first of all, and keep it flat. So stick it between a couple of big books first. You can do this with ivy, with anything at all. And then again, just set the fern down and you're, you're spraying over uh, the top of it. 
and it gives that lovely wee design. Um, again, you might want to just not have any sort of a pattern. Just go with sort of a random look, the way the sleeves are. So this is done exactly the same way as we did the sleeves. Just your big paintbrush and just pat it on all over the place. If you want a really funky look, you can take your bottle of bleach and just shoo, all over. And that will go through from the front to the back. It's going to be quite thick. Um, so you'll find the pattern goes through if you wanted to. If you don't, put a wee bit of, of baking paper or um, a plastic bag and that just blocks it all. Um, again, here's one that I had done with, I just used a, a small paintbrush with this to create flowers. If we can say, I'll maybe put this, I'll put this one out of the way now. So just with a small paintbrush, I painted in the flowers. And you can see that almost tie-dye look. Lovely just where it's bleeding into the edges. It's lovely and soft. And again, there's more bleach in the center, so that's why it's coming out a wee bit lighter. And then just um, with your paintbrush, just flick on a little bit of bleach all over. And that gives you this look. Again, we've just brushed that down the back. And then on the, on the other side, just flick the bleach, just with your paintbrush here and there. This is one that I have done using ivy leaves. Again, just a very plain top and we've given it a completely different look. The fun with bleach is you never really know exactly what colour it's going to turn out until you do it. You can have three navy tops and each one of those, if they're different brands, each one of those will come out ever so slightly different depending on the colour that was originally put into it. Um, but you'll find even with black, you th might think black will go grey. Black goes like a rust colour, almost this sort of a colour. Red doesn't always go pink, it can go again um, like a funny purpley colour and underneath you can see where the navy has gone like a peach, it's, it doesn't go a light blue um, so it does go a, a whole lot of different colours but again this top was done and you can see this is a top that um, there is a little tiny bit of bleach here and there, there's just a wee bit of wear on this top so again uh, this design here was created by this netting. This is actually the stuff that goes in between the walls when people are doing um, plastering. So this is a wonderful thing. This shows you, you can use anything that will just create a little bit of pattern. So pop it down and again, just spray it over with the bleach. And you might want just to spray over that wee tiny area and not over everything else. But again, because this is an older top, I'm just going to give it a wee go all over. And you can see this starting to come up already. So this is just literally ivy leaves that I took out of the hedge and all different sizes. I'm going to take this off. Oh, it's just not reacting yet. But this is how it comes out. Okay. To show you that you can just take an ordinary top and embellish it, add a few wee bits to it. Again, this is a pair of jeans. I've cut out the back pocket of the jeans for a wee breast pocket. Cut out a couple of wee bits here and there. You can cut out letters and just sew them on, just all over, all randomly. But that gives a completely different look to a plain and simple top. So another design that you could do, um, like the t-shirt that I'm wearing today, you can make your own stencil. So I have done a heart shape. You can do a circle, you can do whatever you want. Um, so fold a piece of paper in two and cut your shape into it. So we'll do a heart. So we're only cutting one side. So whenever we open it up, then we have our stencil. You will then 
stick that down with a wee bit of sellotape onto your t-shirt and then you can spray, you can either use the bleach or you can get spray paint. Now use fabric spray for this. Spray paint, like car spray paint, will work but it's very, very, very hard and very, very rough. Fabric paint is much more flexible. Um, so pop that down. You'll need to pin round the edges so that there's no wee bits coming up. So it gives you a really nice, um, nice straight edge. And then to get the wee lines in it, all I did was put masking tape across here and there, across the heart. Spray over it, let it dry. Don't be tempted to lift it at this stage. Let it dry, then take it all off. Um, and again, gives you a completely unique top. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you'll go and try some of the bits and pieces. Um, if you have any questions, you can get me. My Facebook page is just called Unique. So you can pop on there and, and ask me anything. So enjoy, just do it, don't stress. Just relax and just see how it goes. Thank you.